practitioners who are in classrooms every day working directly with students. You guys keep us sharper and smarter. I shared that at the webinar welcome I did on Wednesday. And um, I am thrilled to be here today to learn from and with you, with, with Josie leading the way and look forward to our discussion and time together. So Josie, I'll turn it over to you now. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's um, always a pleasure whenever I get to do some CTQ work. Lori, did you have something to mention? Yeah, I'm going to do a quick introduction, especially kind of a little bit of a warning here. So, and then I'll hand it over to you. You got it. See. Hey, um, Lori, this is why you really should never ask me to welcome, because you know, I <laughs> the agenda and just never know what I'm supposed to do next. So I can only do one thing at a time. I'm sorry. It's all good, hey. girl. It's, a, it's real life and a real class, and I'm sure all of the practicing educators who are figuring out how to do new stuff every day <laughs> appreciate the reality, or I, at least I hope so. Um, fair warning that I just hit the record button um, because there are some folks who would like to join us today but don't have the ability for, for whatever reason, and so we'll provide a recording for them. And so you'll see a little disclaimer at the bottom of the screen there that... Um, by participating, you give us permission to, to share the recording. Uh, just a little bit about CTQ. Um, so we have our history and our roots in research and, and as a think tank. And so we, and we have evolved over time and work in three particular areas. And the inform part of our work connects with both our research roots and in the authentic stories of practicing educators and we use the combination of those two things to help inform the field in sessions like this we also take what we have uh, learned from research and from real educators in real schools doing the real work to do things like this to hopefully inspire those of you who we get to have the good fortune to interact with and then we also work with partners be that schools, districts, unions, state agencies, other organizations, for those who are interested and committed to innovating into a new and, and innovating to create a system, uh, an education system that better serves all of our students um, so that all of us can advance. Um, well, so that we can create a system that better serves all students. Uh, that's enough about us, because you didn't come here to listen to me talk. You certainly came to listen to what Josie has to say about uh, Google Classroom and Flip, Flipgrid. Um, so I just want to take a moment to introduce Josie. I've known her for a couple of years, both personally and professionally. She is an amazing, amazing educator who has been in online spaces for many years. So th this isn't a new transition for her. She brings a wealth of knowledge about what it means to work in Google Classroom, what it really looks like for real kids in real schools to personalize learning for students. And of most significant note for me is her deep, deep commitment around equity to better serve all students. So enough of me jabbering on and I'm gonna pass this over to Josie and I'm thrilled to pass it to her and learn from her. So Josie, you're on, take it away. Thank you all so much. So first of all, part of the, the best thing of being part of CTQ is that they just make you sound so much cooler than you actually are. I mean, you know, I'm sitting here in my pajamas in my dining room right now and I feel like a million bucks. It's like Beyonce on stage. So thank you guys for that wonderful introduction. Um, just a quick little note about how I got involved with CTQ. Um, it, it really was uh, an authentic meeting that Lori Nazarino and I had when I was doing some student board work. And um, she kind of told me about what she did. And I told her about what my dreams and aspirations for education were and she invited me to dinner with some other teachers that were also involved in CTQ right here in Colorado and we had what's called calamari if we have time at the end of the session I can tell you exactly what calamari is all about but it's good stuff um, and we were we were just able to talk and I was really hooked into the work that was happening through CTQ and 
I've been a part of it ever since. I've had the opportunity to write. Um, I've gotten publishing gigs. I've I've done um, some really amazing uh, speeches and talks and ignites and that sort of thing. And um, and it also just brings me right back to my classroom, right? So I am just like you. I'm a teacher that has planning periods and not enough time to juggle all the things that we need to do. And um, so hopefully today I will be able to give you some tools that you can really um, attach to and just hit the ground running when it comes to this remote learning business. So without further ado, we are going to get into it. Okay. So this is called Googling Out, and we're taking um, from the classroom to the living room, changing the way we think about how we can really create engaging instruction for our clientele. And so I want to give you some tips and tricks that are just going to help you get remote uh, in a jiffy, if you will, okay, which is why I put together that crazy little tagline. So, um, so while we're doing this, I want you to go ahead and just feel free to relax, remove your mask, put up your slippers, and just enjoy the time that we're going to share for the next 60 minutes together, um, and, and just get comfortable in your own space and in your own pajamas, and um, be open to the idea that this can really be a fun thing that in hopes, my hopes are that, you know, we're going back to education at some point, but doesn't mean that we have to go back to normal. I know that normal is going to be something that's abnormal. So these are great techniques that you can use regardless of where you're teaching from, whether that's right in front of a student uh, on a daily basis or if you're doing remote learning. So relax with me and we will have a blast. Um, we're going to go ahead and introduce you to the two tools that um, we're going to need. So what I love about both of these tools is that they are highly accessible. You can access Google Classroom from a phone, from a laptop, from a PC, or from a tablet of any sort. Um, so we're going to be using Google Classroom without question. And then Flipgrid is also another wonderful free service that I'm going to introduce you to. Um, and in the chat box, if you want to have some conversation, you can definitely chat with each other and talk about the things that you like about Google Classroom or the things that um, you might want to know about that if you aren't familiar. And same goes for Flipgrid, okay? So if you are new to Google, um, I didn't know the, the breadth of what people were uh, using in their classroom. And some of you might be real googly already. Um, in my district, we kind of have to be googly because our students use Chromebooks and that is the product that is um, that they're interfacing with automatically. In fact, I created a lesson where Microsoft Suite and Google Classroom, I kind of like do a compare and contrast for my students. And just simply because depending upon what kind of technology your students have, if they have access to that, um, kind of will dictate if they're using the Google Suite or if they're using the Microsoft Suite. So for those of you who have not yet been introduced to Google Classroom, I want to show you how quick and easy it is to get up and running. And I have a quick little three minute, four second video that we're going to go ahead and watch now. Take it away, Lori. Are you seeing it? Not yet. Okay. We have the ad anyway here. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you can skip that. You know, the YouTube ad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You seeing it now? Yes. Thank you. Educational tool for anyone with a Google Apps for Education or personal Google account. To get started, go to classroom.google.com and choose sign in. If you're a Google Apps for Education user, click I'm a student or I'm a teacher when prompted. To create a class for students to join, click the plus button and then create class. Enter the class name and optional details if you like. When you click Create, Classroom automatically generates a class code associated with this specific course 
and you'll use this to invite students to the class. Google will choose a theme and banner for your class. Click Select Theme to change it to something else, or use the Upload Photo option to use something outside Google's theme gallery. The Settings icon pulls up your existing course details. Here's where you can adjust the name of your class, find your class code, and decide if students have the permission to post or comment in the class stream or announcements area. If the permission to invite guardians to classroom has been enabled by your domain, you'll see it here. By default, Google will send regular guardian summaries, but you can turn that feature off. When guardians join Classroom, they elect whether they want the summary daily or weekly. It includes We can't hear, Lori. Lori, the video. Okay, so basically they're just showing you how you can invite other teachers to Google Classroom here, which is a great thing, especially when you share students or if you have folks that are in IEP, something like that. Um, you can also invite the guardians. So if parents are questioning a lot about what kind of work is or isn't happening, you can do that too in Google Classroom. Um, and then since we've lost sound, I'll just tell you a few ways that I use Google Classroom Instead of having all those little papers for your... Or you can um, share the class code with them. Oh, let me see what she's saying. Let's switch to a student account to see how students can use this code to join. Students will navigate to classroom.google.com. Any classes previously joined are displayed here for quick access. And to join a new class, students click the plus and enter the course code you provided. Please note that if you are a Google Apps for Education user, only students in your domain can join your classes. Students will not be able to join your course with personal Gmail accounts. All right, thanks, Lori. Um, I was just kind of adding in as we lost audio that I use this a lot of times for do nows or for exit tickets. Instead of having all of those little post-it notes or little scraps of paper that we're asking our students to do for, for um, warm-ups or exit tickets, I just simply pose a question on Google Classroom and then you have a stream video, of, of answers so it can be really helpful in that regard too among all the other multiple ways that we use Google Classroom to uh, give assignments and and create calendars and things like that. So that is just the basics on how you can get up and running with Google Classroom, and I appreciate it. I think Jessica put the link to how you would actually get in. So that is a really helpful tool for those of us that just have no reference to Google Classroom. Um, and your students will just simply need a Gmail account to help get in there. So really simple. Um, you can either, usually schools have a Gmail source or you can have them create one really simply. Okay. Let's go ahead and go to the next slide so that I can show you my next helpful tool. Now, I, I want to say, I wish I would have thought this up. I wish this product right here would have been something that would have been my, my brainchild. But it, it's not. And the reason why I gravitated to this, um, I just want to be very transparent. I am not a flip, Flipgrid expert. Um, I used it very minimally. Um, when I saw a colleague of mine using this as a form of classroom instruction, and I thought it was really cool, but I, I didn't really pay much attention because it looked way too techy for me at the time. So when remote learning came down the pike, I thought to myself, wow, how am I going to be able to get videos made really quickly without being very technologically savvy on how to run YouTube videos, which is so Really, this was just out of necessity where I needed to be able to provide some direct instruction for students to be able to watch over and over again without it really being a, a, a lesson in editing or anything. So I went back to Flipgrid and if we go ahead and press the link, you can see how easy it is to start with Flipgrid. Let's see how. 
So there's a quick little one minute, 30 second video that is just, if we scroll down, we can watch that very quickly. And there we go. Head over to Flipgrid.com and create a free Flipgrid account with your Microsoft or Google email address. Once you've signed up, let's create your first grid. Your grid is your class. So I'll name mine sixth grade reading. Select a grid type. I'll select school email, which will allow my students to access the grid using their school email address. If you're teaching younger learners without emails, you can choose the student ID option. Students do not need to create an account. They will use this code to access the grid. You can personalize it. So I'm going to make mine remote reflection. Limit access to the grid by entering your school emails. Enter everything after the at symbol. Add multiple emails for students and educators. Now that your grid is created, you'll see that we have automatically created a discussion prompt to help introduce Flipgrid to your learning community. Let's make a new discussion prompt. In Flipgrid, we call those topics. You can add links, videos, or anything you want your learners to view prior to recording a video response. Or hop on over to the Disco Library, where there are thousands of ready-to-use topic templates available. Now that you have created your topic, you are ready to share with your learner. Share the link or code with your learning community. This is how your students will access Flipgrid and start posting videos. For step-by-step -step student instructions and more resources to help you use Flipgrid, check out the links in the description below. So it comes with all that funky music too. Um, anytime you put funky music in the background, you know it's a good product, right? So Flipgrid um, is real simple to get started. And I don't know if you noticed, but there is a little area, once you're done making one of your Flipgrid videos, you can boom, click it and go right, download right to your Google Classroom rosters. So the two uh, work very beautifully together. Now I will say another thing. Um, remember that first video that I needed to be able to talk to my students about? I made a Flipgrid and I didn't even know all the beautiful power that it possessed at that time, which was just a few short weeks ago. Um, so I sent out the link to their cell phones and they were able to watch my video right from their phone. So here's why I'm loving introducing these two products to you. So you can download Google Drive, Google Classroom, and any of the Google Suite products right to your cell phone. Then you can also download Flipgrid right to your cell phone. So for those of us that are concerned, because I'm certainly concerned about the equity piece and not being able to provide uh, remote learning for all learners, and I, I definitely, equity and inclusion is at the heart and core of what I do as a teacher. And so if they have a cell phone or access to a cell phone, they can do the work that you're uh, asking them to do simply by using these two products in a completely paperless way. Thunder Mifflin would not like me saying that for those of you that are Office fans, but I digress. Uh, we're, going, we're going paperless for sure. Okay, so with that said, I wanna show you what I have done to show you how simple it is to use Flipgrid and Google Classroom in tandem. And so I created a Flipgrid for this very class with the intention of you being my audience. So you're gonna actually watch me remotely, even though I'm in the room, I'm kind of like standing off to the side, right? And you're gonna see the video that I created specifically for you. Hi everybody and thanks for joining me. Uh, Josie here and what I would like to do is cover some quick easy ways that you can use Flipgrid and get started right away. Okay, so we're gonna just jump right into it. So first of all, when you download Flipgrid from flipgrid.com, um, you can do that either on your laptop PC or on your phone. So I have it on all of them so that um, I can just easily get this done, whether or not I'm in front of a computer. Um, and there's some cool things to know. So once you're in here and you've created your educator account, you can change the way that people experience your videos. So right here, most important thing to talk about is the filters. Um, you can change the filters in the event that you don't want people to see uh, your bad hair day or maybe you don't put on a full face of makeup during remote learning. Um, you can change the 
the way that people see your um, your video. Okay, so that's something for you to know. I really like this filter, so I think uh, this is a bright, happy one. We're going to keep it on here for a while. You can do uh, with Flipgrid is you can share your screen. So this is where it's really helpful for my students because um, in my district we are using. Microsoft Teams to do the face-to-face -face, uh, meetups. And then um, I am using the Google Classroom to load all of their assignments. But given that I'm not in front of my students in a classroom environment, I wanted to be able to create pre-recorded videos that kind of help walk them through the graphic organizers and the assignments that I have assigned. So <clears throat> here's one way that I do it. You notice that um, I did have a method of writing that I had my, st my students doing. I wanted them to transform the questions that I asked them, ask a clarifying question to show understanding and then give an example, also known as the tag method. And for those students who aren't quite there yet in mastering that skill set, I went ahead and I created a quick video to help them out. Now, videos in Flip grid are, can go up to 10 minutes. And the reason why I have two parts here is because the first one was 10 minutes long and then I had just a few more minutes to cover. So it was like a 12 minute total. So I had to make it into two parts. And then also I created a, um, a one pager to kind of help guide them along with what I was talking about in Flipgrid. So this method really helps when it comes to offering support. This is the tab that I had created for them, the, the little walkthrough. So they have their one pager here and you can see that I provide some bad examples that came from uh, kind of the work that they were creating. Um, without calling anybody out, I can use some of that and show how it might not be the best example for what I'm asking them to do. And then I also provide them with great examples in an exemplar fashion so that they can see what I'm going for when it comes to the rubric that I've created for this particular type of work. And one thing you'll know is as you're making your Flipgrid, you can't go in and record you flipping through different tabs. For example, I had to stop uh, and pause to change to this screen. Otherwise, you'll just be looking at a screen that um, is not changed and that, that'll that make some sense in just a minute. Okay, so I have gone ahead and I have shared my screen with you. I first showed you my Google Classroom and then I showed you some of the links that I have provided in Google Classroom that brought students to other uh, areas in my drive so that they can really keep track of their work and it's all in Google Classroom. They know where to reach it and they also have a video to help guide them through that process. So that's the probably the, the number one reason why I would say Flipgrid is so helpful and how it coincides and works really well with Google Classroom. In the event that you have a website or you're using Schoology or some other kind of LMS, um, Flipgrid is, you have the ability to make your quick little videos into little information links that don't require you to go to YouTube and load it up on that. So you don't have to have a YouTube channel or anything. You're pretty much up and running once you download Flipgrid and once you have an LMS to send those links to. Hopefully that's helpful. Another thing that I want to talk about, let's get to some really um, interesting things that you can do. In Flipgrid, there is the ability to do either a blackboard or a whiteboard. And what's really cool is there is a drawing capability um, that you can actually, let's choose a color. Um, you can draw with the different colors. <clears throat> I am not very good at drawing with a mouse, but you can create that if you are uh, great at doing that. Or this would also work like if you had text or something up on a uh, on your screen and then you want to show uh, editing or something like that. You can also change to 
a black background, which would be helpful. You can also add different things like icons, and this is all happening right from your dashboard. It's super simple to do, and um, I don't know, I think this is one of those things that you can really help with student engagement, and um, it's pretty fun. So you can also do that to your own pictures too, so you can see that I'll give myself some emoji earrings right here to help. And it's really simple. If you decide that you don't want some of them, you can uh, delete them right uh, individually. Or there's a button just above on my forehead. You can't see it, but I can. If I press clear, then everything goes away and you're back to your interface. So some more behind the scenes information is um, I have been creating this particular video for you in little tiny segments. So every time I know that I need to make a transition, say I wanted to share my screen or I wanted to do a blackboard or something like that, there is a great big huge pause button just uh, right here below. Things backwards. There's a pause button right down there um, that just helps you to be able to stop and start when you are making your video. So for a five minute video, figure that you've got, you know, a couple of takes and there's also an ability for you to go in and kind of clip things out that you're not interested in keeping when it comes to creating uh, those little bit of clips. Unfortunately, you can't go into the middle of a video clip and take that out and uh, do severe editing like you would in other applications, but for something like this where you're just trying to get information to your students quickly that they can watch again and again, um, this is kind of a no-frills way to do it and really, really helpful. And um, uh, the last thing that I'll say is you can create a video and your students can actually reply back to your video by pressing the great big green plus sign that comes along with your link that you send to them. And you can send this to them in Google Classroom, you can send it to their school email, you can send it as a text in their, to their phone. So the way that you can share this information is also really helpful. Um, last but not least, there is an ability for you to uh, share movie files and things like that. And then instead of creating a video like this, you have the ability to share uh, YouTube videos and things like that. So I highly recommend you get a, uh, set aside a time, maybe an hour, where you can just play with Flipgrid and have fun creating these for your students. Um, I'm, I'm also going through the free tutorials that the Flipgrid system has for you. So. As I go through those tutorials and there's blogs and things like that, um, I'm learning lots of great stuff that is just helping me to be a more effective remote educator. Hope this was helpful for you and reach out if you have any questions or concerns. So that was made just for you and just for this audience. Now, there's some great questions that are in the chat box. One of the questions that I don't have an answer to for, for you just yet is do the students have the same ability on their end when they're making a video to change filters and whatnot um, or whiteboard and blackboard? I don't know the answer to that one just yet, but we are gonna have um, an opportunity to get into that tool in just a bit. So. Um, that would be something that I will definitely be wanting to play with. So um, let me get that out of the way. So I just wanted to, to iterate some, some different products that are available to us as remote teachers. And then I wanted to just solidify why I chose Google Classroom and Flipgrid to kind of be my go-to tools. So um, there's a lot of face-to-face -face interactions that are available to us as teachers. Of course, we have Zoom, which is what we're doing here. MS Teams, which my district is pretty strict on us using MS, MS Teams for some reason. So all of our meetings and whatnot happen in MS Teams. 
Um, students are really interested in doing FaceTime with their teachers. Um, they definitely want to be able to interact with us face-to-face, uh, -face, but I feel, and I'm a high school teacher, so I'm speaking from just my experience, um, it seems that FaceTime for my students is easier than, say, Teams is for them. Um, so definitely something that um, you can try with your students. And then Facebook Live, uh, depending upon your, your district's uh, rules, I guess, around Facebook, you know, it is something that you can teach on, but it would require a Facebook account. And would require, I would think that it would be a lot more difficult to get students into a Facebook Live scenario. Um, so Google Classroom, just this last couple of weeks, actually came out with a face-to-face -face, um, uh, service for teachers to be able to speak with students. Now, I did download it and wanted to see all that it could offer because if you can avoid one of the layers of getting to your student remotely, I think that that's smart. Um, unfortunately, in my district, there was a, a firewall or some sort of thing that the IT department would have had to work with. So I've got that order in um, and we'll see what happens. But as for right now, uh, we're not able to use that part of Google Classroom in my district. Um, and then of course you can create pre-recorded interactions using YouTube or TikTok, uh, Facebook Live. And I, the reason why I like Flipgrid is because it is educator based. It doesn't have the opportunity to be bombed by somebody. Uh, there's no predators out there looking to, you know, make life miserable. It is something that is a closed type of a thing that is shareable only through a Gmail account and that, um, that your students are using for feedback and receiving instruction. Okay. How are we doing in the chat box, Jess? Do we have anything that we need to cover yet? I think you're good. Okay, fantastic. So here's why I personally decided against going the YouTube route and went for Flipgrid. Um, I would have had to create a YouTube account and then I would have had to create a YouTube channel. Then I would have had to create content outside of the applications that I'm using in front of me. Um, I would definitely need a better camera because my iPhone has seen better days. I don't have anything fancy. I'm still at six plus or whatever. <laughs> and um, I don't have like an outside mic or anything like that. Um, and then I know myself, I know given that I'm a bit of a perfectionist, I would want my video to be super, super perfect. And so I feel that if I had a YouTube account, I would be spending more time doing the edits perhaps than doing the remote teaching. And I just don't have the luxury of doing that. Um, so in other words, this is why I went with the Flipgrid method. It's easy, it's quick, it's fast. It's got some fun things, but it's not enough to like completely disengage. Um, so that's why I personally chose to go Flipgrid and not the YouTube route. So I mentioned earlier in my uh, longer video how I'm actually using the Google Classroom and Flipgrid in tandem. I'm creating videos of things that I want them to know and then to not overwhelm my students, I'm creating one pagers that help them uh, so the one pager kind of goes over the information that I want to share with them and then the video explains the one pager. So I wanted to show you an example here. So if we could first maybe pull up the one pager so that I can show you. So I created this one pager for teachers at my school like, hey guys, I've been trying this with my advisory and um, it's been working, so I wanted to share that with other teachers. So I created this remote learning success tips for students. It's three quick little tips. And this is exactly what I did with my advisory. I asked them a couple questions. How long are they staying up? What time do they go to bed? And based on that, what four hour block of time do they have during this remote learning experience that they are most able to stay awake and do the work? Then in the second tip, um, with determining that block of time, we discovered what works best for them. And so I don't have to be available if one of my students wants to work from 2 a.m. to 5 a.m., but I do want to show them how to use a schedule. So that was tip number three, where 
I helped them build a quick schedule for each day of the week and then created a time for us to have one-on-one -on -one conversations, whether it be through uh, texting or FaceTime or Teams where I can say, okay, how did your Monday go? And what, what do I need to talk about with, with you and your other teachers for Monday math day? What do you need for Tuesday science day? So this actual tip really helped my students who were kind of like, I wanna work, I just really don't know how to get started. And so this one pager was really helpful and we'll see on the video um, that I made for teachers that I work with how they can use it. So this is the one pager and then if we can get back to that other slide, here's the video and I think this one's like a minute 30. Are you seeing it? Yes. Okay. You'll see Josie here, and I just wanted to create a quick video to show you something that has been really helping me to help my advisory um, as far as this remote learning is concerned. So, this is my one pager that I create whenever I make a video, and um, this one is about remote learning, obvi. Um, so, remote learning success tips. For students. So I used a little meme that students would be familiar with. What if I told you that remote learning can actually be fun? So I've given three tips here that I use with my advisory to help them get Lori, I think this is everything I just said live. What I was noticing as I was meeting with them is that they were do you want Yeah, so I think we'll stop the comment. video because <laughs> <laughs> I just said everything. Yeah. Sorry, guys. This is, uh, I'm learning right along with you. So um, this kind of happens, but I don't want to waste your time and iterate what that is. I went over that. Um, and I've really found finding a simple way to just one pager it, video it, even if I have to do several chunks of videos for my students to shorten the amount of time that they have to watch a video, I'm finding success with shorter bits of information more frequently uh, is really helping to just have them um, work at a pace that is not overwhelming. That The fact that they don't have us physically right there like pointing to the thing is, is, is leaving them feeling a little bit insecure and so I almost am creating that in a virtual sense where I can be there for every little step of the way um, which does mean that I have to pre-design a lot of and anticipate some of the things that might happen but as I'm going I'm finding the shorter spurts are working really well okay so let's see here okay so it's real simple you're gonna sign up for a teacher account at Flipgrid and what I love is that there's also online tutorials with Flipgrid that you can use. I learned a lot of those things just by watching the tutorials. I think that there's two or three hour long tutorials that you can watch at your, uh, at your discretion and it's free, okay? You can also make videos to show your gorgeous mug or you can share your screen um, and then you create all of your content inside that application. And then earlier you saw the disco library. There's really cool stuff in the disco library. You can like have them read something and uh, respond right away. There's so many cool things that you can do and they're pre predetermined lessons that are plugged in there. And then you can also become part of the Disco Library. If you're doing something that really works for your students, you can upload that too. It is a teachers for teachers kind of thing. So very cool on that. So many of you have been asking in the chat box, well, wait a minute, I use Flipgrid for my student feedback. And you know what, it's funny. That's what it was intended to do. That's what it was made for. And I just really, honestly, like I needed a way to like do videos without having to go to YouTube. So that's how I use it first. But I love that this is the thing, right? This is all of the things that we want. We want to be able to increase engagement and have peer-to-peer -peer feedback and be able to provide a to-the-minute feedback when we are doing our instruction and have a limited amount of direct instruction so that there's time to think and time to do, right? So 
Did I mention that kids can respond back with their own videos? Well, guess what, folks? We're going to get a chance to use the tool. Um, so on the next slide, um, we're going to go ahead. I created something for you that's already in my grid. And with the, the help of TV and my beautiful assistants, Jessica and Lori, we have something living for you here ready for you to join. So this is my grid, and this would be your very first assignment that you would start out with. So you notice that there's a prompt here. It says, say hello and tell us your name, state the name of your school, what you're teaching, and then share a fun fact about yourself. And um, I believe, Jessica, are we putting like a, how are we doing this? Look, there's yeah. Jess and there's Lori. Um, and here's the great big green button that you would, your student would just press this without having to have a Flipgrid account. So how are we doing that, Jessica? Yes, so both Jennifer and I have dropped the link to the Flipgrid. So we are going to give participants a few minutes to try this out by clicking. So you're gonna wanna click, you're gonna wanna copy and paste that link that we just dropped, which is flipgrid.com slash Martinez Josie into your browser. And then it will load this page. You'll see exactly what you're seeing on our shared screen here. You're gonna click that green button and be prompted to record your own video, which I promise is super easy. Having done the dress rehearsal just yesterday, it's painless, it's easy. Um, have fun with it. It can be short and sweet. And then you'll get to kind of view and comment on others. And I would, uh, since we had some of the questions about do students have the same dashboard capabilities with whiteboards and blackboards, this would be where we would find the answer to that. So if the answer is yes, there would be a, a bit of a grid where kids can change it. I haven't seen it. So um, when we come back here in just a few moments, we can discuss that together, okay? How much time do people have? Um, I think that it gives you a one minute, 30 seconds. Uh, I wouldn't say that you would have to even use that whole time. Go ahead and just, record a quick um, a quick message and, and see what it feels like from your student perspective and we'll come back here in two minutes. Does that sound good? Awesome. Yeah, let's see how many videos we can get on here. <laughs> I'll keep refreshing. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what we'll have to do. And it, it took a little bit for it to refresh, right, Lori? Not too bad, but I know it takes folks a little bit to do their videos and then right. figure out how to navigate. Meanwhile, I'm reading the chat box. Not. Yeah, no, I will open the door when I'm done, Henrik. And if there's anybody who's um, needing some direction or something, we're here for you.
and it doesn't have to be perfect teachers. <laughs> right. Woohoo, we got another one. <laughs> All right, Ian. Okay. Yay! I did one. <laughs> Excellent job. Woo if I can do it, anybody can do it. Oh, Anne, I appreciate <laughs> you doing it. Now what we can do um, is we can show you what you will see when you're a teacher. So we'll go ahead and just click on and see one of the um, videos. Whichever one you want to choose, Lori, you can show us. Let's see Anne's. and everyone on this great webinar I am enjoying the new things I'm getting to learn to do and think about with Flipgrid and here is my very very first video yeah. so as we can see there is an uh, oh sorry there is a, a chat like little button where you can just provide instant feedback right there Oh, I guess it's not instant. You would have to log in with your Google account. My bad. But it does take just moments to do that. Did it follow me to do that? I think it did. I think it prompted you. Oh. But oh. that's okay. Okay. So you're, I think you're actually in the, you're right now. <laughs> Hi, Josie. Go ahead. Um, so yeah, it was just taking you back into the Flipgrid. That's that was one of the things that when we were trying to show you guys. Now, hold on real quick. If you could go up, Lori. Oh, wow. We've got some participants. Oh, I can't wait to all these. I know, right? Ooh. So cool. Um, so if you go to the very top, I want to show you what it looks like. So you have the ability to choose your background here. So this is my grid how-to for teachers. And so you guys are part of this. But then teachers at my school are also part of this group, right? And so... If you were to click on that Josette Martinez information button, that is the grid code. And it's as simple as, um, see that flip code right there, Martinez Josie? You can just go in and like get into that and you can actually change that. So Flipgrid will give you like a numbers code right here, but you have the ability to edit it. So if you have, you know, like sixth grade science class, you can change it to whatever you need so that your students are really able to find you very quickly, okay? So um, again, I would say watch the tutorials. So far I've got two hours in and I am just loving what I'm learning here. And um, it's fun. And you, as you can see, we've already got a look at Annalise H has used one of the, okay, Annalise, if you're in the house, girl, I'm gonna ask you something. You seem to have found the button for the filters. Was that something that was available to you as a student to use? And Elise, if you're speaking, remember to unmute your microphone in the lower left hand corner. I love that we can see that because that's giving me hope that maybe students do have the ability to use those same filter features and whiteboard and blackboard. Did anybody else find that information out? Yeah, Josie, I mean, I was in as a student, so I did. Uh, because we're on Zoom and recording and I have headphones in, I, um, I, had, to I had to unplug my um, headphones from my computer and then mute Zoom so I could talk and not be talking to the room. But all of those things that you showed us earlier were all available to us. So um, Fantastic. super cool. 
Super cool. And I could see where I could provide feedback. Like, let's say we were in a class and having a discussion or whatever, and I'm supposed to provide Annalise or, or Rachel or, or somebody, Grace, uh, some feedback. I could see how I could type some stuff and say some stuff uh, at the same time and then post it in this room so that they could see it. Um, and, and it gave me a place where I could title it. I could write some notes in like maybe who it was to. I didn't take the time to do that, but I could have if, if my comment was focused toward a particular person. So that's really super cool. Yeah. The ability for peer evaluation, peer to peer evaluation, I think this is just strong. And then let me tell you a couple of other ways that teachers are using uh, Flipgrid. So we see them using Flipgrid for Let's say you wanted to provide some kind of a, a, a secure testing area. There's all of these on and off switches that you can actually go in. And right now you guys can respond to each other's videos, but as the teacher, you have the ability to make that not be the case. You can also um, mute somebody right away. You can provide different people different kinds of test questions. And so there's lots of ways that you can uh, commit to personalized learning with Flipgrid um, as opposed to just this big thing, okay? And then you can create a mixed tape. So as you're sharing with the class, you know, all the things that kids are saying, you can have almost like this really cool montage moment where students are seeing themselves and their peers, you know, really investing in whatever project or assignment you have them doing. So a really powerful tool here that we have and the fact that you can just download it right to Google Classroom is cool. Um, I do want to iterate that you also, you don't have to have Google Classroom in order to use Flipgrid and you don't have to use Flipgrid with Google Classroom. They're two separate entities, but they're playing well in the playground together. So we're, we're liking that. And anytime I see two completely different companies finding ways to connect to other uh, tech, I, I just love it and I want to support them. So, um, so that is how we Flipgrid and that's how we use Google Classroom for real quick up to the minute ways to teach. And I, I want to also iterate this. These are two simple ways that you can get up and running and not have to like learn a whole new way to teach, right? This is just you, finding, doing what you do, this is the avenue and the tool for you to be able to show others what you're doing because we can't be with them right now in our classrooms. So you can still be with them in their living room. So with that said, I am ready to answer any questions or have conversation around what this might have sparked in you. Um, it can be a statement. What do you, how do you think this is going to um, assist with your remote teaching. Um, I can also say this, I'm going to be using this even when I do get back to the classroom. I think this is a great way to really flip your classroom and um, I'm loving it. I'm finding it really kind of fun. It's, it's breathed new life into me and, um, and it helps me to just be 10 minutes worth of instruction, right? Like I don't wanna make 10 minute plus two minute videos. I, I wanna be able to to give my students that time to think and that time to do. So with that, what questions do we have? Hi, I have a really simple, easy Google Classroom question. I don't know what it looks like from the student's point of view. And so I'm trying to not overwhelm my first grader. They're really easily overwhelmed. Yeah. When they submit an assignment on Google Classroom, does that disappear from their view or does it still show up as something that they can click on and do again? So that's a great question. Um, everything that you can see in your Google Classroom um, feed, everything you see in your feed, they can see. So you guys both see the same thing. Here's a really good tip. I would recommend when you want students to access their, anytime you're making an announcement, asking them a question or giving them an assignment, have them open everything in the classwork tab. So there's a couple different tabs on the top. 
you've got the stream tab, which is similar to like how Facebook would look like you'd see everybody's everything if, if all of the, the uh, permissions are open, which can be overwhelming because you know, you're seeing everybody's stuff. If you go to classwork, it's just the things you've sent them and that really helps them to be more organized. Um, another thing I would recommend to keep it simple is think about Google Classroom as kind of like an electronic backpack. Oh my gosh, my phone is ringing, that is crazy. Um, I never get called and I have a landline, that's nuts. Of course it happens during a webinar. Um, I just hung up on them, that's so mean. Um, so anyhow, think of it as an electronic backpack. So anything that you would want them to have in their backpack, make it into the classwork. So I often ask, like when I'm asking for a warm up question, I'll create a question. And there is the ability to do that when you hit the create button. When I want them to do an assignment that needs to be turned in, I create an assignment and the really cool thing about Google Classroom, you can assign the same sheet of paper individually to each student so that they don't have to make a copy and then email you their return. All they have to do is hit the turn in button and it's in your email ready to grade. So it's super, super simple. Um, and then the other option that you have you can ask a question and they can make an announcement. So like an announcement is, hey, um, I'm gonna have open office hours from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Thursday, and they don't have to respond or anything. The announcement will come up in the classwork, but they can't reply. They can reply to questions and they can reply to assignments if that helps. I am so excited that you're gonna be doing this with first graders, I love it. Other questions? Well, it looks like we're coming to the end of our time together, folks. Um, I cannot believe that we're actually on time. This is nuts. But you notice that there's lots of ways to get in touch with me. And I feel a little bit shy about myself, as you can tell by all of my handles. <laughs> um, so first of all, um, Josie458 at iCloud is my personal email. Would love to uh, offer any advice or answer any questions you might have there. I am Pinterest famous. You have to have over 2,000 followers on Pinterest in order to be Pinterest famous. So I have like 2,034 or something. So find me there. I have lots of really wonderful uh, boards that you can look at all around um, education. And then um, Facebook, I kind of, that's like my second home away from home. I don't Instagram so much, but I will if, um, if you guys want to contact me there. And then the last one, um, at Josie is awesome. <laughs> it's been a while since I've been on Twitter, but I, I do like doing Twitter. So find me. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Um, and just know this, it's been a pleasure being able to offer this to you. I cannot wait to see um, how this affects you. And I would love to learn how you're using these two products as well. So thank you so much for your time. And everybody, please join me in whatever way works for you and saying a huge thank you and congratulations uh, to Josette. I know I learned so much. There are definitely some reactions with some clappies. Um, so thank you very, very much. Josie for spending some time and working with us and if anybody has any additional questions or interest in our additional workshops or want to connect with CTQ, my contact information and the information for CTQ is here. So thank you very much. I hope to see you all in some of our future workshops. Uh, Thanks so much. Bye. Evening.